In this video, I want to look at displacement time graphs uh, as opposed to distance time graphs and really make some comparisons between the two. Okay, So a displacement time graph might look something like this. So the displacement of the particle given in meters, okay, and then we can have time in seconds. And let's say uh, we have a person that is uh, positioned at some uh, starting point, the origin, here they are, okay. So then what they do first is they walk um, let's say two meters in this direction and they take five seconds in order to do it so I won't put that in there, yeah, that'll be two okay so they take five seconds to walk those first two meters in the positive direction so we're going to be looking at something that looks like this there's five seconds and displacement two meters and then what they do is they then walk back Okay, and they then travel seven meters this way in order to get back to minus five, that position there. Okay, so then uh, let's say that that takes a further 10 seconds. So we would be looking at, there's now 15. And we now be at minus five. Okay, so their displacement time graph could look like that. Okay, so uh, in the first five seconds, they walk two meters in the positive direction, and then in the next ten seconds, they walk seven meters in the negative direction. So their final displacement is minus five meters from their starting position. OK, now what would the distance time graph look like? So, distance time OK, now initially they haven't moved anywhere so uh, they are at zero, zero OK, and in the first five seconds they travel two metres So at the moment, it looks pretty much identical to the displacement time graph. But now because the person was walking back the other way, okay, the displacement became negative, but distance does not. Okay? So in the next 10 seconds, they walk, uh, well, 7 metres, don't they? Okay? So we're going to be up here somewhere. Okay, so in total they have walked nine meters. Okay, two meters there, seven meters back again. So nine meters in total. And this is what their distance time graph would look like as opposed to displacement time. Okay, so it's like each of these negative gradient lines are reflected up to make the distance time graph. Now, what can we read from a displacement or displacement time or distance time graph? Well, what we're used to with straight line equations is reading off the gradient, okay, finding the gradient. What could that represent? Well, for distance time, if you've traveled two meters in five seconds, then you know that you can work out your speed, okay, which would be two fifths meters per second, or 0.4 meters per second. So, in actual fact, the gradient for a distance time graph will be the particle speed. Whereas for the displacement time graph, because the gradient of these lines could be negative because the particle's traveling in the other direction, the gradient is actually the velocity of the particle. 
okay? So the change in displacement divided by time. So whereas, for example, here, you've got 9 take away 2, so 7 over 10, so 0 0.7 meters per second is the speed for this section here, between 5 and 15 seconds. Between 5 and 15 seconds here, you've got from 2 down to minus 5, so minus 7, divided by 10, so minus 0 0.7 metres per second, because it's tr the person's travelling back the other way. OK? So that is what we can tell from a displacement time graph or a distance time graph. And we're going to look at an example of uh, a, some, with some particular questions in the next video.